Okay, Nick and Andy, the time has come. The start of the 24-25 Premier League season is almost here. It's time to reveal our predictions for the table, what we think is going to happen. Champions, top four, relegation pitcher, top scorer, players. We'll talk through it all. Of course, everybody watching can bookmark this video and check in May 2025 and just tick off all the things we got right uh, on this prediction video. Nick, I'm going to come straight to you, mate. Let's talk about the relegation picture first. Let's start from bottom to top in the Premier League. Obviously, the three new boys are the favourites um, to go down. And we saw last season how tough that is. Do you see that being the case this time? Because we've made our table predictions over on Pro Soccer Talk at NBCSports.com. And we all actually have one of the new boys uh, surviving. I'm pretty happy about all we all have uh, surviving yeah. as well. But can you talk me through it? Well, mostly I was afraid of losing my job. So I picked South... No. <laughs> I I think it's going to be really interesting this year. I, I even think the team I have finished to go uh, pick to go 20th, Ipswich Town, is, is going to play an interesting style of football. They're going to pick up a couple of surprise wins this year. Um, I think it's going to be tight down there. I, I maybe it was three years ago, Joe. Um, we started talking about the, you know all the money being thrown around and how much it mattered to stay in the league. And I think I went out on a limb and it didn't look good for a couple of years. But I said at some point, it's just going to become so hard to stay up. And it's not because these teams coming up can't play or they don't have a good philosophy. It's that I I have a hard time picking which team could drop down. And I start to look at all these teams yeah. where if one thing goes right and they stay healthy. Are they a top 10 team? Well, guess what? There's only 10 spots for the top 10. So, yes, I do have Ipswich Town uh, and Leicester going down. I have Saints staying up because Nottingham Forest just still seems like a little bit of a mess to me. Yeah. Andy, who do you have going down, mate? Yeah, I've, I've got the same three going down. I've got them in a slightly different order down at, at the bottom of the table. Part of me, I, I don't want it to become what Nick was just talking about, where it's an automatic, hey, who's coming up? And, you know, that's who's going down the following season every single year. Obviously, we had that last year. It's That is part of the what, what we love about English football is the way the teams move throughout the leagues and, and can work their way up and they, they can fall down. And, and so I don't want it to become that. Uh, I, I agree with Nick on on forest as well it seems like there might be maybe another points deduction coming at, at some point this season uh they brought in a bunch more new players i don't think they have a manager that they're probably going to stick with for the long term i would imagine uh not to jump ahead nuno might be the first manager to go this season because that's what forest decides so yeah, I, I agree. And Lester, tons of questions financially, what's going on with the club. Um, and so I, I think it's going to be pretty clear that probably four teams in the race. I think Southampton in the race, but I'll pick them to stay up. Nice. We all agree with that here. <laughs> um, I have Saints staying off as well. Nice. But I think Ipswich and Leicester, Ipswich, just because of some of the moves they haven't been able to make so far, they might make up for that late in the window. But right now, I think their squad yeah. just a little bit weak. Um, I think Leicester given the potential for points deductions, et cetera, Steve Cooper coming in, Maresca leaving, losing a lot of key players as well this summer, far from ideal for Leicester, given the financial situations. I, I think Forrest are going to be right there. I think there's that kind of group of six or seven teams at the bottom. Um, I include Brentford um, in my relegation three. I think Brentford are going to go down. The Ivan Tony situation, just kind of lingering on. Um, obviously, Igor Tiago was the player they bought to replace him. He's been injured in preseason, so that's far from ideal. Um, but I think Wolves as well. I'm really worried about Wolves, given that Pedro Neto, Kilman uh, being sold this summer, the financial limitations on them as well. And who knows of Everton what's going to happen, or even Fulham losing Xiao Polinia. So there's probably a group of about eight teams, I think, legitimately you could just you know, toss them all up into the air and and just guess as to which three are going to go down. But undoubtedly, the three that came up are really going to find it hard um, to stay in the Premier League. All right, Nick, when we talk about the other end, sort of European picture, top four, who do you have in your top four? Let's, let's talk about the Champions League places first and then we'll move on to the title uh, race contenders. So I think we have a two and a half horse race for the Premier League title. Okay. Uh, Man City and Arsenal in it for sure. Liverpool, I think, has the talent, have the talent to be there. I just expecting a new coach that is so not drastically different, but, you know, we've heard Harvey Elliott talk specifically about it, about the possession and how it's a different mm -hmm. thought process. And when I hear a young player say that, yeah. I get a little concerned. So he's the change they needed. 
I think. Yeah. And I think we yeah. kind of called yeah. for it the last couple of years stylistically, like, hey, Jurgen, pump the brakes a bit. Just yeah. slow it down a bit. You don't have the horses to do this that you once did. Mm-hmm. And he just wouldn't. I, I I agree with you on that. And I like the idea of Gravenberg playing more. I think they have they have good pieces to move around in the middle. You know, if, if Endo can be your guy, you need to use every once in a while. Um, you know, can they get a couple more big years out of Van Dyke and Robertson? I don't know. So there are too many questions there for me to say that they're in it, but they're going to win most games. And then it comes down to the fourth spot. And you could convince me with health and wealth, it could be just about anybody. I'm not going to pick them, but I'll tell you what. You can make a case for what West Ham's done this summer as being a surprise package team, but I'm going to go back with the team going back into it. It's a little bit of a homer call. I have I have Newcastle going. I have Isak and Bruno Guimaraes with a year of no other competition to worry about outside of when they get to the deeper stages of the tournament. Um, if they can navigate the center back injury to Boatman, if they can get you know if that's the position, if they can sort that position out. I think they're going to be an exciting team, and and I think they could hold off a United, a Chelsea, a Spurs. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think injuries ravaged their season last time out, obviously, in being in Champions League. And aside from that, they were still really up there and close at the end of the season, points-wise, to being in the top four. So, Andy, I think, obviously, Tottenham, Man United, Aston Villa, they're kind of the next group of teams, right, that's going to be pushing for the Champions League. Obviously, European football, Villa being in the Champions League, United and Spurs in the Europa League, that will stretch them to their limits. But there is a very clear group there where we don't really know who's going to finish in the top four. Yeah, you know, the thing I like about Newcastle the most is there's no attention on them right now. The The mm-hmm. focus the last couple of years, because last year going in back into Champions League for the first time in 20 years, and and the, the takeover and all the money spent, there was so much focus and attention on them, and the expectations were probably a little too much too quickly, and they probably overachieved a little bit uh, quicker than they probably expected they would. And so now the attention is uh, back on Manchester United once again. It's on Chelsea because of the way things are going at those clubs, and it feels like Newcastle's just kind of going into the season under the radar, very quiet like Nick says no European football to contend with I have them third in the table this season I just think that just all of those factors and 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 I think we know that they will be willing if they're in a good position I think they will become January uh to to make one solidifying move I think we know that they'll do that And, and I don't think that's the case for every team in the Premier League on Spurs I think Spurs I I, I love what Spurs did uh, this summer in the transfer window. You bring in Dom Solanke, who is uh, a much more complete forward than I think a lot of people give him credit for. I think a lot of people are thinking, oh, he's just going to get in the six-yard box and tap it in. He's pretty good in hold up. He's really good carrying the ball on the counter, which is something that's very important in, in Ange's system because it's it's so fluid in the top three, uh, the front three, front four, front five players, you know, interchange a lot. And so I, th- I think that's going to be a great signing for them and really a missing piece. I just question whether they can keep the ball out of their own net a, a little bit more because he is so, uh, he's just so excited to go forward and attack and take the game to the other team. And I love it. It's, I, I could not wish for a more fitting manager for Tottenham because that is that is kind of the ethos of the club but when we're talking about where they finish I've got them fifth just behind uh, Liverpool and Newcastle so I think they might get into Champions League uh, who knows what happens with the coefficient this season yeah true Man United though I like some of the moves and some of the sort of next stages that some of their players are making Garnacho, Kobe Maino obviously had really good ends to last season um, and then Some of the additions have been good. I still need to see a bit more from them, but I could see them being in that position um, right up there around the top four at the end of the season. I like the West Ham shout, Nick. I really have big hopes for them. Uh, Full Krog up top seems perfect for West Ham, even without David (laughs) Moyes. Seems like they're going to play very, very similar. And then Kilman, Wambasaka, just great additions. And they've spent that Declan Rice money. They've kind of held onto it for a year and then used it really wisely this summer. And Lopetegui, we, he did a great job at Wolves. We know his pedigree as a manager. So, um, yeah, I think the Hammers are going to be right up there. In terms of the title race then, Nick, um, obviously we're all expecting Arsenal and City to go at it again. I had Arsenal winning the Premier League this season. Um, I think this is it. I think this is the season they, they finally get over and, and do it. Um, obviously, with the caveat of Man City, we've heard you know the, the Premier League Chief Executive Richard Masters is saying it's time to figure this all out. There's reports that the hearing is going to start soon over their 115 charges for potential breaches of Premier League financial regulations. So 
that's kind of rumbling on in the background as well. Not that it'll be much of a distraction. It wasn't last season, but it seems like that could come into play, right, with whatever kind of punishment that's been thrown out there as well. So I'm going with Arsenal, um, but I think it's going to be very, very close again. What do you guys think? Andy, you're ready to jump in, I can see. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a distraction because it's been, if it was going to be, it would have been for three years now, I think, <laughs> because that's kind of how long this has been out there. I think it's going to be a galvanizing, motivating okay. factor that Pep is going to just beat until it has nothing left in it. I think he is going to squeeze every ounce out of that for motivating this team this season. They don't want us to do this. They want to stop yeah. us. I think yeah. he is going to – it's going to be a siege mentality, I think. And so that's why I've got City for the title this season. I also think – uh, for, for Arsenal to run it as close as they did last season, they needed Holland to miss a month and a half, and they needed De Bruyne to miss a half of the season, and they still couldn't quite get it over the line. City still got it, I'll say. I, I won't take the shot at Arsenal in that way. Uh, but, but, but City just do it. This is just what they do. And, and, and I think as long as Pep is there, yeah, it's good luck. Nick, I, li I like what Arsenal have done though. Calafiore coming in gives them basically, again, the Man City model of playing four centre backs across the back four. And don't worry about full backs. They'll, you know, these guys, Ben White on the right, Calafiore on the left, can tuck in and play that, you know, midfield role and just be more expansive, get them on the front foot because they know they're going to have a lot of the ball. And you're in Timber coming back to fitness as well. Another good defensive option. Um, probably need one more bit. I'm not sure, like maybe one more attacker Arsenal if they can, but um, I just feel like they're, they're right there. And I feel like maybe a lot of the City players, um, just one season too many for them, it feels like. Uh, a lot of players just over that. But on Andy's point, I'm pretty sure Guardiola underneath those really lovely thick sweaters, he has probably has the number 115 on the back of his shirt. And, uh, <laughs> ready to rip it off one day. But go ahead, Nick. What do you think? No, about okay. That? So... The way I'm looking at Arsenal, whether it be Kelly Fiore or – I think they will take another step this year. Uh, and I think the, the title race is going to be insane even when City – I expect City to be at their best again too. Um, but Mikel Arteta has a system, and I respect that system. And if I'm going to say last year, hey, we got to wait on Nunez for – uh, for Man City, and we've got to wait on Guardiola. We may not see his best because they got to get used to it. Well, this is year two for Declan Rice and David Raya, who I think is – I've picked him to be uh, keeper of the year this year. I think he's going to really do it. We saw it with Brentford a few times. I think that's the case with Arsenal. I think both of these teams don't have too many people that are going to be adjusting. Uh, Phil Foden, what he showed us last year, Holland is spectacular. I think this – that's the other reason it's two and a half for Liverpool. There's a lot for Liverpool to sort out. I don't think there's a lot for either of these teams to sort out. And I would expect that this race will go down to how they do against each other. I really yeah. think it could be one of those things like we saw with City Liverpool a couple of years ago where you circle those dates and you know the title race is swinging this way or that based on these 90 minutes. And uh, by the way, can't wait for that. No, that's going to be epic. That is going to be absolute. And you're right. So many match winners on either side. If you look at City squad, even though they've lost Julian Alvarez, is just deeper than Arsenal's. If Arsenal have a few injuries to key players, then it's pretty much game over in the title race. But if they all stay fit, then we are set for one hell of a title scrap throughout this season. All right, head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for all the latest predictions on player of the season, manager, um, the sack race, top goal scorer. We have all of those predictions as well as the table predictions up as well. So you can scrutinize them. Can't wait for this new campaign to start, Nick and Andy. We're nearly there. It's going to be a fun one. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.